Hi, Tony Doing here. I'm an interventional cardiologist at a University of Colorado Health. We're a little north of Denver up in Fort Collins in Loveland. We've been in the uh, Progress CTO registry since 2012, and I did put this up here for a reason. Listen, if we want to compare my uh, retrograde experience to Bill Lombardi or Mike Wyman or Manus Berlakis, there's no comparison. But this talk is not really for those guys. This is a talk about a stepwise and a way simplified approach uh, to externalizing wires. And so this is really more for normal people. The goal is to have an externalized wire, which serves as a great rail when you're doing these complicated CTO interventions. And so I will give you steps in order to achieve this. There are two main options for performing externalization. The first, probably more intuitive, is to use the retrograde wire to wire the integrate guide or guide extending catheter. The second is with the use of snares or snaring. Uh, which sounds like a four-letter word, but really is not that bad. Uh, indications include occluded ostiums for vessels, and here you can see we're working in occluded left main, also occluded right coronary arteries. Um, the snaring can be very helpful. There are times also where you simply cannot wire the guide or the guide extending catheter where snaring can help. And this is just a cartoon showing you the retrograde uh, microcatheter retrograde wire into the antegrade guide and then with an antegrade balloon to trap that wire in place in order to help deliver that Corsair. Um, this is just a close-up of a Confiance Pro 12 that we're bringing up to the uh, antegrade guide. We want to step one establish a coaxial guide use a Pilot 200, Gaia Second, Mongo um, progress as needed to more aggressive wires like Confianza and Hornet wires. Uh, I, knuckle wires can help, but they're difficult to steer. This is a Confianza Pro 12 with a nice coaxial guide and a retrograde uh, microcatheter and a nice spot with the cannulation of the antegrade guiding catheter. The use of a guide extender is very helpful. This is a picture of a guide extender all the way down into the right uh, during a reverse card. The bigger the guide extender, the better. So step two, now you've delivered the uh, wire, the retrograde wire into the integrated catheter, and now you need to deliver the retrograde microcatheter up into that same integrated guide. And so again, pinning that wire in there with the balloon is helpful uh, to deliver the catheter. Step three, we have our retrograde microcatheter into the integrate guide. We'll simply pull the retrograde wire and replace it for an externalization wire. The R350, as the name implies, is a retrograde 350 centimeter wire. Uh, it has good delivery and good support and it's most commonly used at this time. The RG3 is thinner. Maybe we'll go more places. You could use it with epicardials, uh, but with less delivery and a uh, length and 330 centimeters. Okay, so we have our retrograde microcatheter in the integrate guide. We've exchanged for an externalization wire, which we're going to push uh, through the retrograde gear um, back out into the integrate gear and out. But first, we need to prepare that integrate guide. So we'll take off the co pilot, we'll take a wire introducer and thread it through. We'll have our finger resting on the back of the integrate guide, and as we push the wire out, It'll make contact with your finger, and then you'll be able to uh, thread it through the wire introducer and replace the co-pilot. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is on the retrograde side, it's not unreasonable to leave a wire turker or a clamp on the wire so that you don't accidentally pull it in while you're doing the intervention. Please keep in mind when you're externalizing wires that there's a big concept to protect the vessel. Essentially, that's dangerous having a wire uh, coming in and out of the heart, and it needs to be protected by a microcatheter at all times. 
just except for this area, the little area where you're doing your PCI and then possibly maybe at the end uh, while you're inspecting the septals. The big time to watch out is anytime you're pulling back on equipment, you have to know that the guides are going to dive into the vessels and you can have ischemia or dissections. Uh, generally, pushing equipment is okay, but pulling is when you really need to be cognizant of this situation. And then secondly, the other big rule is that thou shall not uh, ever let the anti-grade equipment, balloons, stents, microcatheters come into contact with the retrograde uh, microcatheter on the externalized wire. And if you do that, it can get stuck together. You can have gear entrapment and require open heart surgery that you don't want. We're in step number three. We've externalized the wire. Now it's time to bring the microcatheter back just as far as you need to do the PCI, but not too far as to um, expose the septals. Also, when you're bringing it back, just watch out that the retrograde guide doesn't dive in deeply. What you can see is I'm a little close here with the stent and with the um, microcatheter, and I'm trying to back it up as far as I can and not cause trouble, and I end up getting in a little trouble there. Step number four, we've done our PCI, things are looking good, we need to get the wire out and so what we'll do is advance that retrograde um, microcatheter back into the integrate guide and then we'll bring out the um, retrograde microcatheter and retrograde wire together out through the target vessel, out through the septals and then out the donor vessel. There are people who stop with a wire down the septals with the microcatheter and the donor vessel, take a picture, bring the microcatheter back down, and then get it out. And we're checking for a septal perforation, and I do have a small one here that was not a problem. If you get a big one, it's not impossible to get a septal hematoma, which can be problematic, but it may be that you know about this before the end of the case at any rate. When you've attempted to wire the guide or guide extender, uh, four or five times or when your vision starts to get blurry like in this picture it's time to consider snaring. Also time to consider snaring like I mentioned before is just you have no ostium of a vessel and you can see the right coronary artery has really no ostium the guide is out in space and so we're able to go retrograde we have a microcatheter out near the ostium and our wire is out in the aorta and that's where we're going to need to snare. And so the end snare 1830 is what we use, it has three loops, you don't want the one loop, you want the biggest snare you can, and that'll fit into a, a six French guide. You need the loader and the snare, you do not need the delivery catheter. What you'll do is load the snare into the loader, you'll pull it back into the loader, use the loader to deliver it in the guide, and then you'll use the guide as the delivery catheter, the integrated guide. This is an example of snaring. Uh, step one, we've delivered the retrograde microcatheter up as, about as far as we can. Step number two, we've changed to an externalization wire. Step number three, uh, we place the snare at the um, coronary sinus and then we manipulate the wire into the snare. And by the way, the movie is in the PowerPoint presentation, but you just can't use that for these presentations. Uh, gently then we'll pull the um, snare, the snared wire back into the integrated guide. And anytime you pull, again, you have to watch that retrograde guide. And then also in the movie, you can see that the microcatheter, retrograde microcatheter does migrate somewhat, but it's okay. And this is a, another example of snaring up in the aortic arch. You can see the wire is a little crazy, but we were able to snare that and externalize it. Again, pushing pulling uh, the wire back, watching the guides, removing the co-pilot just as before, and then we'll need to cut off the snared portion of that wire. It's the uh, same externalization wires we discussed before. You do want to snare on the soft portion of the wire. Okay, uh, pushing and pulling to externalize that wire, watching the guides carefully, um, the co-pilot's removed, and then you'll trim off the snared portion of that wire, which is a presentation on itself.
Okay, so we've successfully performed the PCI. We're to step five here of removing the externalized wire, and we've done this before. Uh, we redeploy the retrograde microcatheter into the integrate guide and bring out the retrograde microcatheter and wire together through the target vessel, through the septals, and then out the donor vessel. And what you can see here is I did get a, uh, this is the same case that we had discussed before where I was kept moving the microcatheter back and back and back and I did get a small uh, septal perforation. We um, balloon occluded it for a while and we did end up needing to tap that. With that being said, though, the patient did just fine. And so watch out for ischemia pulling in the guides when you're pulling. Watch for channel dissections, which I showed you, and a rupture, which I showed you. Watch out for osteal dissections when you're pulling arrhythmias, and then don't entrap your gear. Don't ever let it touch. And so I gave you four steps for wiring a guide and five steps for snaring. Externalization, the most important thing is protect the vessels. Um, sometimes you'll need the snare. Snaring is not that bad. I did not address tipping. That's for another day. And then this last slide just shows you a summary of the steps we talked about. Thank you very much. And thanks for uh, allowing me to do this talk.